What are your dinner plans tonight? I heard about this new place. It's pretty underground. Or at least it was. It's in this little town in Italy and they're calling it the Thermopolium of the Fifth Region. And so far there's only one review out. Well, it's more graffiti really, scratched into the counter. And it translates to... Actually, you know what? Forget that. Thermopolium literally means a place where hot is sold. Which is no finger licking good, as far as slogans go. But it's also not what the locals would have called it. I say would have, because this particular fast food joint has spent the better part of 2,000 years buried under volcanic ash since Mount Vesuvius destroyed Pompeii. Recently it's been excavated, revealing in incredible detail the layout, decoration and the menu of this particular food outlet, which was one of at least 90 similar joints operating in the city at the time. These were small rooms open to the street with an L-shaped counter that had embedded earthenware serving jars called dolia. And still inside these dolia were traces of duck, pork, goat, fish and snail dishes, which all would have been served alongside vegetables, fruits, cheeses and wines. They had a seating area for dining in, and in some cases a room upstairs offering accommodation and the uh, negotiable company of women. Thermopolia served the average citizens of Pompeii. The rich had plenty of kitchen space, and the slave labour to make use of it, but the majority of Pompeians lived in small apartment blocks or insulae, with no space for even the smallest model of Thermomix. So for a hot meal, they'd head out to their local Thermopolium, grab a bite to eat and get on with their day. Pompeian fast food was basically a healthy Mediterranean diet, which is not something you can say about most of our current fast food options. When future generations dig up a McDonald's, it will probably be the food, and not the furniture, that's perfectly preserved. From ancient Pompeii until today, the best food spot is often whatever is close by, affordable, filling and reasonably palatable. And those of us delivering online service in modern times, we can learn from the millennia-long success of fast food. There is no one best form of service. When you just need some food so you can get on with your day, you don't want to be confronted with 15 different types of forks in a bowl which might be for your fingers, but could equally be a tiny soup. I don't know soup. about you, but I've never been able to figure which goes with what. <laughs> <laughs> and if you just need a quick answer to a specific question, you may not want to have a long back and forth conversation. That detailed, high context email thread, it could be vital to one person, but be utterly time wasting to someone else, or even to the same person on a different day. Trying to craft one perfect customer service experience then, it's like making people pick just one type of food to eat forever. Even Augustus Gloop would have gotten sick of chocolate eventually. Instead, like the Pompeian food sellers, we need to understand our customers and their context, to be where they are and to guide them to the most appropriate form of help according to their needs. And sometimes that will be deep one-on-one -on -one conversation. But other times a quick chat or a well-written document is vastly preferable. Software allows us to build that classy, dimly lit white tablecloth type of customer service, but to also have the bright self-service knowledge-based drive-through open 24-7. And maybe you can even drive a food truck full of contextual in-app help right up to their office door while they're getting their work done.